a record crowd of over 200,000 will be standing by with anxious eyes to roar their approval if records fall or groan with disappointment over failure. And then it's 11 o'clock, the moment which has been the goal not only for the past weeks, but a year of planning, inventing, hoping. The track is now open for qualification. First on line, Jim McElree, 1962 Rookie of the Year. Each qualification is a four-lap run, or 10 miles on this two-and-a-half-mile track. And McElree qualifies at 149.744 miles an hour. The battle against the clock is not only for a starting position, but for one up front in the field. Carnelli Jones last year took the number one spot in the Willard Battery Special with a new Speedway record. Today, he's out to break his own record. the tricky winds, Parnelli turns a 152 miles per hour lap and averages 151.153 for the four laps, setting new lap and qualification records. The pole position is his again, if no one else runs faster today. Jim Clark, Scotsman and runner-up world champion Grand Prix driver, is a rookie at Indianapolis. Like all rookies here, he has qualified himself by taking a driving test. In time trials, the car is qualified for the race. Veterans or rookies all have an equal chance. Jim Clark qualifies the new Lotus Ford number 92 at an average of 149.75 miles per hour. He turned one lap at over 150, showing that the car can run with the offies. Don Branson, in the number four leader card special, joins Parnelli in the front row of the starting field with an average of 150.188. Roger Ward makes his bid. Roger is a two-time winner of the 500, 1959 and 1962, and looking for his third victory. Watch out! The veteran Ward corrects in time and qualifies the Kaiser Aluminum Special at a respectable 149.8. Jim Herdebees, known as Hercules, takes out the no-buy number 56. it on and comes within a quarter of a second of Parnelli's lap record. He qualifies number 56 at 150.257 miles per hour. Crew chief Gene Marcinet, working with the Novi since 1948, has faced the heartbreak and frustration of near success time and time again. Will this be the Novi year? Rookie Bobby Unser qualifies the second Novi, number six, at 149.21 miles an hour. To get in the race, you gotta, you, you really gotta fight it out. So you have to go out there and stick your way, neck way out to get in there. You know? Otherwise, if you don't, well, you're not in the race and uh, no chance to show what you can do. And rookie Art Malone qualifies the third Novi, number 75, at 148.343 miles an hour. begins to fill. Eddie Sachs qualifies. Eddie came within eight seconds of the winner in the 1961 500. Roger McCluskey qualifies. Roger was edged out of the sprint car title by Parnelli Jones in 1962. Johnny Boyd qualifies the Bose Seal Fast Special. Number 
93 was built in six hours by the Lotus crew after number 91 was wrecked in practice. Dan Gurney's qualification speed is an amazing 149 in a new car. Others have had their troubles. Dwayne Carter suffered a cockpit fire in number 84. He spun out in another Thompson car, car number 83. Recovered and later qualified the repaired car number 83 at 148 miles an hour. Dwayne is 50 years old with a racing career that goes back 31 years. In three of the four days of time trial, 33 cars post qualification times that put them in the race unless someone comes along that's a little faster. In the practice that continues between and during time trials, some try too hard. Seat belts and roll bars protect Jack Turner from serious injury. This spectacular series of flips is caught by the slow motion camera. and spins out in number 73. Bob Harkey breaks loose in the first turn and smashes into the wall. Harkey's all right, but the car's through. has been trying for three years to make this race. It is the last hour of the last day of qualification. The cars are waiting on the line like a bride without a bridegroom. It's now or never for Troy Ruckman, who listens to the instructions of Chief Steward Harlan Fingler. Troy, when you're, you decide to go, and if you do, put your hand up Good and high, right in here by this stand. Can, Harlan, what will. you're saying to us is, and to the timers who are on you all the time, start my qualifying time on this lap. Now, if anything happens to that flag or anything, just keep going as long as that light's green. All right. Okay? Yes, fine. All right. Thank you, Good Dan. luck to you. In 1952, at the age of 22, Troy was the youngest driver ever to win the 500. Troy Ruckman bumps Eb Rose out of the lineup with a qualification speed of 148.374. Now that he did it, Troy isn't quite sure how. There are only a few minutes left to six o'clock and the end of time trial. Dempsey Wilson is on the bubble. He's low man and the target for any new attempt. In the last seconds, no one is able to bump Dempsey, and it's over. Dempsey is in with 147.8, the difference between Dempsey and Parnelli. The last and the first of the select 33 is only a half a second a mile. This is the fastest field ever to start the 500. Average speed, 149.028, almost two miles better than last year. This is the day of the 47th annual 500-mile race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway.
Henry Homer, Speedway president, speaks the historic words. Gentlemen, start your engines! 